This is Twit. Are you, is Windows 365 this, you know, this new product? Is it what we thought it would be, Mary Jo? Are we excited about it? Yeah, yeah? pretty much. The branding isn't what we thought. We definitely thought they were going to call it Cloud PC. And then they right. announced it as Windows 365 and said, but you can use that service to go to your PC in the cloud, which we call the Cloud PC. I'm like, oh, oh. God. But okay. there's a reason I think they want to call it <laughs> Windows 365 because it compares to Office or Microsoft exactly. 365. Oh, and it's literally yes. Windows. It's, it's a not like you have an op you don't have an option of other OS. Yeah, it's right. Windows. It's a, a no. subscription right. Windows. But what the real question mark for me because this is not new. Other companies do it. Um, yeah. uh, Microsoft. Oh no, no, even Leo, does Leo, it Leo, already. Leo. It's brand. It's brand new. Brand new. I don't know what you're <laughs> no, talking Microsoft about. Microsoft does it in Azure. <laughs> this is but the right. question they is, it's expensive right now. Well, well okay, so they haven't the disclosed the pricing, right? right? One price. So there's going to be a million SKUs of this thing, probably at least ten, right? Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. The one that leaked is thirty-one dollars per user per month. So that's not bad. That is, but okay, that's only for virtualized Windows. That's not including Office. That's not including any apps. Okay. That's but just, Office would be potentially another sixty. But it's a year also or kind right? of a low end, low end skew, right? It that's is. the question: how much right. RAM, how much processor, how much storage? Yeah. Right. So um, for the thirty-one dollar, it's two uh, virtual cores, four gigs of RAM, one twenty-eight uh, gigs of storage. Okay. That's the thirty-one dollars per user per month. Okay. So I'm in my mind the calculus that a business owner like me would be doing is okay i can buy a, a dell inspiron for vicky yeah. in the, in the bookkeeping or i can pay 30 bucks a month 360 dollars a year yeah so that's a maybe yeah. half she can use third, her computer and she can right. just use her computer or a thin client or whatever yeah. Yeah. Right. so th but the problem is that's kind of low end but then maybe that gives us a starting point but it i does. think that they have to hit that they have to kind of it has to amortize out to roughly equivalent to having the hardware Exactly. Right. right. You're, that's your calculation, right? You're yeah. like, okay, what yeah. if I buy a bunch of cheap PCs, but I give the people more expensive capabilities I buy Chromebooks. through the yeah. service? I buy a couple no, hundred It'll work Chromebooks. with Chromebooks. Yeah. 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 It will. And yeah. then, and then I'll save me on management, you know, IT. Right. So yeah. um, I know I'm going to save some money. So I got to figure that savings. I got to figure out the Chromebook cost. And then I got to yeah. figure out, well, does this make sense compared to buying yeah. it? whole PC. Right. right. Because the highest end skew of this thing, I mean, if you have somebody who has a really low end PC, but they want to access the highest end, the highest end that they showed us so far is eight virtual cores, 30, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, 512 okay. gigs of storage. Okay. Right? That's pretty good. And, okay. And they're saying yeah. that could be for software developers, engineers, content creators. Not, like they say, if you, if you, yeah, but how much is that? End, 99 a month? I mean, right. We don't know how much that is. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and then and then it's so a couple of things. So it's, it runs in any browser, right, or any competent browser. Yeah, right. right. So there's, you can run it through a browser or a local RDP client, um, okay. which gives mm -hmm. you more capabilities and more functionality if you go that route. More um, security, probably. Um, and you could and the the real advantage is I, for my editors, for instance, they can yep. work here. Yep. Yeah. And then they can go home and uh, pick up wherever yeah, they left off. Right? Exactly. Right. Right. Yep. The 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 poor version. Well, no, that's it's actually still pretty good. I mean, I I think when you add um, OneDrive to the mix and you have different computers and you can bring bring yeah. up the documents you were just working on, that's really cool. But having your actual environment just be not duplicated, but just re it's it's the same environment. I mean, you're just bringing it up on whatever device you happen to be using. Yeah. It's that's that's pretty neat. There's I mean, an, it's, there's another market, probably not one Microsoft worries too much about, but people with Macs. Oh yeah, Mac is yeah. supported. Yep. Which they, means they I can definitely thinking about them because <laughs> you know the new M ones really. Uh, it's going right. to be a question mm -hmm. mark about how you're going to run Windows. But this is this is the other way. This right. is the right. And this yeah. is not even emulation. This is native, right? That's yeah. right. And there's a native uh, RDP client for Microsoft mm -hmm. for the Mac. There is. Yep. I like that. I'm. You know, that might yeah. be yeah. how I run Windows going forward for me. Well, so here's the here's the catch, right? Um, this is not for consumers at all. Um, right. to, to use this, you have to have licensing rights and a subscription to oh. something called Windows 10 E3, uh, Enterprise Mobility and Security E3, or oh. Microsoft 365 F3 E5. You know, like it's not for it's an enterprise product. Uh, normal people. Yeah. It's yeah. an enterprise for now. product. I mean, I, I think that changes. Exactly. Right? So 
they've been quoted as talking about this as an education product, which they didn't yep. announce any education. And also small, and small businesses. Yep, and small yeah. businesses. And, and enthusiasts. Consumers. I think enthusiasts no. would, might want this. Scott Manchester, who's the head of engineering for this product, said in a couple interviews, and we're thinking if there is demand by consumers, we'll make this yeah. work for consumers at some point. Yeah. In it's well, the future of computing, if you ask me. Yeah. I know you said that. Now, my, my contention, and Mr. <laughs> Wonderful, aptly named in our chat room, says, well, <laughs> but how is this more secure? Well, because... <laughs> I don't have to be a seeker. It's right. always yep. patched. It's always up to date. I don't have to do anything. Right. Uh, None of your right. data is on your device. It's yep. all in the cloud, right? I mean, um, we're going to trust Microsoft to keep it secure. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They're professionals, and they're almost always going to do a better job than yeah. even a savvy amateur. Right. Yeah. I think. I think so, too. That's why I, you know, I, I store yeah. my password vault in the cloud uh, instead of uh, at, f by myself, some people say, "Well, I'm going to keep my vault on my yeah. on my a uh, floppy disk in your <laughs> you know, front pocket." <laughs> and I figure, you know, if you're if you're Bitwarden, or yeah. you know, you know what you're yeah. doing, you're going to secure yeah. that uh, yeah. better than I can. Yeah. Uh, one one hopes. Yeah. Yes, you would hope. Um, and then you know, any kind of compliance um, processes that your organization has, or any any kind of business requirements that's automatically just going to be applied and you don't have to worry like oh am i looking at a document oh, i shouldn't nice. be looking at oh right? that's huge you know? yeah. yeah so they basically are managing this i mean it still plays a big role in managing this if they want to but microsoft's doing a lot of the heavy lifting and the idea of this service was to make it easier right now you can do this through windows virtual desktop which got renamed to Azure Virtual Desktop. But that's not for like normal people. That's like you really got to be a high-end enterprise. You got to really know what you're doing. You are paying for the Azure services that you consume. And this is just meant to package it up, make it um, more available in a better way, in a cleaner way, in a simpler way to everybody in business. That's the idea. And I think 30 bucks for the PC you described, which is really low end, is about right. It is. Yeah. That's $360 a year. I think that's... That kind of makes sense. It's going to have to be cheaper yeah. for consumers, right? Well, there's yeah, going to be would, a different think. categories of users. You know, I think I would be the kind of casual user that would just like having Windows in a browser tab. And I'm doing see, what I'd like stuff. to see is um, them let you subscribe to some number of apps. You know, I don't need the desktop environment, but I right. want the app, an app right. to come down. Yes. You know, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So we'll see. So, yeah, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know yet. The, there's all know. sorts you know of ways what, to we, slice it. And you can virtualize. A lot of, I saw a lot of people thinking you can only virtualize Office and Microsoft apps. No, your own apps can be part of this because you're virtualizing your whole desktop. So yeah, if you have, yeah. yeah, if you have an app running on your desktop and you have the licensed rights to it and you've bought it, it will run on the service automatically, right? It, that Microsoft said the ISVs don't need to do anything to make it yeah. work. It should just work. But you'd need it um, then to be running it on a Windows machine, which is kind of weird. Do. Why yeah. would you do this if you already have a Windows machine? Well, <laughs> for those security <laughs> reasons you just mentioned, because you have yeah. maybe a personal machine, you don't want your company managing it as an individual, which is one of those things uh, you could do. Yeah. Your company may not be sophisticated enough to do that anyway. They might, you know, but this is a way just to have something that's secure up in the cloud. You can still hit apps or the entire desktop environment yeah. from your own computer. Yeah. But when you close that window, you're, it's your computer again. Like you've, mm -hmm. nothing has Love that. Yeah. come to your computer. Yeah. You don't have to worry about Love it. Love that. Yeah. 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 I, I honestly think this is the future of computing. But yeah, there they're are... going to solve a few things for consumers yeah. first, right before they make yeah. it a consumer. The service. biggest problem is the name, you know, and I it agree that it's is. okay. The, only because there's a history to it, you know, there and is. that when Office 365 came out and Microsoft 365 became a thing, people have been saying for years, oh, it's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to make you pay for Windows every uh, month. That's how it's going to yep. work. And <laughs> it is it is going to be one of the ways it works, right? It's not going to replace yeah. Windows as a locally installed operating system or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be another option. I sure. think they're not making you... Th I think the way to think of it is not that you're paying for Windows. You're paying for the hardware. And Windows comes yeah. on it. Sure. You're paying for the service. Yeah, um, right. right. And, and Windows is free, just as it would mm -hmm. be on your PC... It, exactly. it yeah. comes along for the ride, yeah. but instead of buying a heavy-duty PC, you're, you're yep. doing a thin client and the PC's in the cloud. And mm -hmm. that's yeah. why Stadia and xCloud, these gaming services, make sense. Um, yeah, for sure. 
for sure. And I think they're just the toe in the water for what eventually will be a lot. Well, the up, it's the upgrade situation that's so interesting. You know, like a game service, they could upgrade the resolution or the quality of the graphics or whatever it is, and you don't have to do anything. You just that day you sign into your web browser or whatever, and you just get it, and that's what's going to happen here right. as well. There's the last mile problem. People in the chat room are saying, mm -hmm. "Well, what are you going to do if you have crappy internet?" Well, you're not going right. to do this. That's uh, the point. This is not replacing are, anything. It's a, it's right. additive. Right. They're working on offline access. They said. Um, I mean, I don't know how. Somebody's so got to work on getting come, better but. internet access in the U.S. We have. I, I keep yeah. yeah. ruining my tip, access. but one of the the other session I recommend watching from Inspire is the Windows 365 session, and one of the things that's interesting about it is the presenter shows. That, that, well, he says, I believe he says we kind of optimize this for like twenty megabits you know download okay, speed that's, right that's uh, which yeah. is not particularly high right but you know even here in rural pennsylvania i can get 300 um but he said you know it's interesting when you're on this thing you're in the data center so he did an internet speed test and it was like a thousand megabytes <laughs> you know, like yeah. it was like really because yeah. you're getting their speeds right yeah. and yeah. that kind of yeah. thing oh. helps a little bit with when you think about latency or lag or whatever mm -hmm. yeah because you're um, just streaming the pc yeah. to your desktop so it's, but the, it's you're, you're, but you're if, also if getting you're, the, you know, their connection, which yeah. is a little bit better oh. than yours. <laughs> a little bit better than yours. Good point. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. you're downloading that, a big file, or yep, uploading a big it. file. Oh, it's going to be it's, it's going to be everything that 5G promised, <laughs> yeah. but didn't okay. deliver. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a yeah. really good point. You're yeah. just streaming the session. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. really a good point. And 20 gig, 20 megs is probably plenty for that. Yeah. And latency is not an issue for desktop computing. It is for gaming, and they're solving it for gaming. But it's much less an issue for desktop mm. computing, right? You don't, yeah, well, if you can figure out gaming, then th this kind of thing is easy. Easy. I know. Yeah. I want to see, like, you know, they talk about AV, uh, AV capabilities and teams and how will that really look in this kind of service. You know, you're right. doing a chat. Um, That's what people ask too. They must out. <laughs> yeah. How do I? What if I? Yeah. I want to. Yeah. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a webcam connected to the device I'm using. I'm yeah. gonna use a microphone. How does that work? You know. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we we we're gonna have to find out. I don't know. Yep. Well, the Do microphone you know. will be in the cloud. The microphone. <laughs> just yell. Yeah, you have to speak <laughs> up. Speak up. Speak up. Cloud mic. 